Hi, we're going to review the website tonight of Baldy Smith Photography. Baldy's a portrait and sports photographer based up in Yorkshire, in Hull. And uh, we're going to take a quick look through his website. Now, Baldy's got a fantastically uh, designed website here. It's based on HTML coding. And we're going to have to take a quick look through some of the areas that he can improve his site and areas that he can... Uh, uh, he's done things really well. So first things first, at the moment Google loves us to have a site that's secure and gives confidence to our clients. So up at the top of the page here, um, just in the address bar, we've got a valid SSL certificate, so that's fantastic. At the moment though, Paul's got a couple of uh, errors taking place with the validation of his site and uh, he needs to do a little bit of, of work on that because he's picking up some differences in the redirections between his HTTPS and his HTTP, so the, the protocols that drive where customers information is sent to. So there's a couple of little bits to, to take a look at there. Another fantastic thing that Paul's done, he's already installed Google Analytics on his site, that's been running since 2017. So he knows what uh, customers are doing, how they're finding his website and uh, what they're looking at when they're there. So that's fantastic that we've got some back end information going on as to what his marketing is doing. Now, as we scroll down his first page, we've got a nice heading at the top here. Um, we've got a, a large space here to the right-hand side. Now, we, we read through a website like we do read a paper. So we read from left to right, and then we Z down through the page. What I would recommend, Paul, is up here in the top right-hand corner of the, the page that we put some contact details up here because it's one of the places that we tend to look for contact details straight away. And then again at the bottom of the page down here in the footer, it would be quite easy for us to have some contact details, some details of how to find us, where we're going to, details like that. So that's uh, about the header bar. One of the other things I would do with this header bar is at the moment it's very much left justified. Now I'm looking at this on a 27 inch iMac. So I've got quite a margin down the page here on the left hand side. What I would recommend, Paul, is moving this uh, menu bar so that it just lines up with the, the boxed content that we've got further down in the page. Then we know where to look. At the moment, there's about half a dozen pages to your website. If we click on the galleries, we've, we've got four different galleries that are here. We could think very carefully about the, the way that we word these galleries because we can give them a little bit more appeal than just traditional photographer's terms. We've got to remember that when we come to a website that uh, we're coming as a member of the public and uh, some of the terms that we use are very typical to photographers, not to, to general members of the public. As we centre the page here, we've got a, a promotion running straight away. And whilst I really love this and the calls to action, we've not actually um, captured the, the interest of the client yet. So I would think about moving that a little bit further down the page. These blocks of text are really, really good, and I love the fact that you've included some calls to action to book now as we go down through the page. If you take a look at the code in behind this book now button at the moment, the, the same piece of code has been used for every one of these buttons. Now, if we vary that code, and I'm not sure if you'll see this on the webinar, but right at the bottom of the screen, it, it shows me the code that Paul's used, and each of the subject lines on every single one of these buttons relates to an athlete's inquiry. If we vary the code that we use behind these, we can tell exactly the buttons that people are using to click on to get in contact with us. And that's a really good way of measuring which parts of our website are working better than others. At the moment, we've kind of crammed all of this information together. We could quite easily add some dividers in, add a little bit of white space. Don't be afraid to spread the information out. People are used to scrolling down through a page. So it's quite easy to, to freshen this up a little bit add a, a few centimetres of white either side of these dividers and make the, the page a little bit more um, luxurious and, and spaced out. Now, the bottom of the page here, we've got our footer area or the junk drawer, as it's referred to by an awful lot of people. This gives us the opportunity to link back to some other pages, to link to our blog and other bits and pieces like that. So there's some bits that we can put in the bottom here. Now, one of the things I have noticed, Paul, is that uh, uh, you've got in contact by the, the British Institute of Professional Photography, and I know that you're a member of the Guild of Photographers as well. Including their logos at the bottom of the page here um, really does give the public trust. They might not necessarily know what the logos mean, but if you're a professional in, in IT or uh, in electrical or plumbing or any other business, you tend to know that uh, legitimate businesses 
uh, registered with trade associations. So it gives a little bit of peace of mind. Another great one is the Federation of Small Businesses. Um, and again, it, they just give the public that little bit of peace of mind that you're, you're working with somebody that's accredited and professional. So the trade logo is going really well here. One thing that you've got further tucked away in the site is testimonials. Now, testimonials really build trust because there are other people that you've helped before um, that you've done a good job for and that uh, are really pleased with the final outcome. Introducing some testimonials on the home page give us the opportunity to, to talk to people about work that we've already done. We've got a good amount of text on this page and that's one of the things that Google will love about your home page. But at the moment, it's very much about you. The, the second kind of line of the, the page is my work. I've always loved sport. We want, we're all. It's very easy to make all of our marketing very much about us rather than about the customer. You've started to get it here. It's all about you. We should be talking about why they want sports portraits done. We should be talking about why they want portraits done, how a professional headshot can help them improve their image get a better career, uh, more money, and things like that. It's, it's less about the actual um, process of photography. It's more about why they need our photography. If this is you and your family here at the top here, I'd love for you to actually uh, tell people that you know, this is your family. This is the reason for, for doing what you do. So as a homepage goes, this is a really fantastic start. Some of the things that you've done, which uh, I can see behind the scenes, you've started to do some work with your page, uh, with your SEO. I'm going to click on the link here and let's have a look at some of the, the SEO bits going on. So I use the Moz toolbar, and this tells me that you've got a page title in here at the moment, Paul Smith, award-winning portraits, the sports photographer. We've got a meta description. Both of these are really nice length. You've got some keywords in place but then you've not used any of the H1 or H2 tags. Now, Google can't read photos. Well, it can, but not intelligently as it, as it would like to at the moment. So when Google reads your page for the first time, it reads this information here. And this is all text-based information. And this is effectively a bit like a librarian looking at your website and saying, right, what's this website about? Who wants to look at it? So as we go down our page, our H1 header will be our most prominent header, a bit like the headline on the newspaper. Then our H2 headers and H3s and H4s are the subtitles as we go down our page. So employing these headers and the, the right kinds of titles can really make a difference in us being found on Google. Now, meta keywords aren't, uh, aren't used as much in, in SEO anymore. They were something through the 80s and 90s that were very, very strongly used but we tend not to, to use them quite the same way anymore. People used to stuff their pages full of these kinds of terms and then artificially tweak the way that Google looked at their website. Google's a lot more clever than that now. But if you look at these two here, the page title and the meta description, do you think the average Joe that's popping something into Google are gonna use these kind of terms to search for your business? Now, as we go through the site, we'll see that these headers uh, the page title and the, the meta description are the same throughout your website. So there's some work to be done there to improve your SEO. It's important to use information like location, especially if you're uh, geographically located and you don't tend to travel the country. But this page title and meta description are really, really important because these are the two parts that show up when you pop something into Google. This is what comes up in the search results. So. Paul Smith, award-winning portrait and sports photographer, and Paul Smith, portraitist, capturing your uh, story in a creative, authentic way at a specific moment in time to be treasured forever. It's long, it's wordy, and it's probably not as catchy um, as some of the other ones that we might be surrounded by in our search results. So thinking about putting those in a way that can actually tie up with some keywords. So, for example, the page type of one of our other pages might be something along the lines of captivating sports portraits of athletes in Hull, North Yorkshire. Um, our meta description might expand on that, you know, um, environmental portraits. But there's an awful lot of words that we use as photographers, which the public don't know. So it's worth us spending some time to think outside the box a little bit with these terms, because
because these are the bits that people are going to see when they when they Google us. So I'm just going to kill that little part off at the top. So we're going to have a look at the galleries. I love your athletes work. Google would love it as well if it could see it. Now, what I mean by that is when Google reads this page with its spider bot, all it can see is some links to, to different images. Now, one of the issues that we have with this page is we don't have any text. So if you can, Paul, I'd be adding some blocks of text at the bottom of here describing the way that uh, you plan and undertake some of your athlete portraits, the kind of athletes that you'd like to work with, the, the sports that you're interested in work with, information like that you'd, you'd really like to see. Probably about 700 to 1,000 words down here. And that sounds like a lot, but if you break it down into why people would book you, how you can create something unique to them, it's really, really important. One of the things I'll be very careful of here, you show a lot of this kind of glow technique of uh, capturing movement, and that's fantastic, but don't um, put, paint yourself into a corner. There's some very strong portrait work that you do on your website, and sports portrait in a very similar kind of style would go down equally as well. So don't just narrow yourself into one corner, because uh, people might be wanting something of a totally different style. If you think of racing cyclists and bits like that, they would want a very different style of environmental portrait to some of the bits that are shown here. But you've got a really good basis to start with. Again, you've got a call to action at the top here. Email to schedule your free consultation. Do you know what? I think of a consultation when I'm going to the doctors, when it's something painful, the dentist, uh, things like that. So we could have something a little bit softer, but a little bit more direct as well. So again, I could change this into a button. And it would be very nice, but I would scatter that down through through the page. And again, we could have our trade logos and the footer bar with some more content here at the bottom. Now, I've looked through all of the galleries and some of the important parts that I was going to just point out to you. So this is the code. I'm just going to try and pull up the same piece of code here. So I'm just going to... On the left hand side of our screen here is the code for Paul's website and on the right hand side here yeah, on the right hand side is the code on the left hand side of the Paul pictures now Paul's using something called Cloudflare which means that uh, it caches all of his pictures which means it not loads nice and quickly and uh, we've got a great HTML based site but if we look down and through, I'm just going to try and pull up one of these images and show you the coding for, for Paul's images. So at the moment, here's a line of code which pulls in one of the portfolio images from Paul's website. Now this, port, uh, this image is in the folder called Portfolio, in the folder called Athletes, and then our image is called DSC1941 under slash new. Now that's the, the file name given to that file fresh out of the camera. Now, when it comes to search engine optimization, if Paul had chosen to rename these files and call them something like um, athletes portraits, indoors, gymnast sports portrait, um, number one, bits like that, then that would all help towards the SEO around this athletes page if he's chosen a, a keyword like athletes portraits. It also gives us, when he loads it in, the opportunity to add what's called some alternative text. Now, if you look at this one here, it's, again, the image is spin 14. So we could have that uh, change to um, cyclist in spin class 14.jpg. And then we've got here what's called our alt text. Now, when Google reads this page in, it can't see the content of the pictures. So it's working by the information we give it. Now, Paul's really clever. He's turned around and said, right, this is Ava. Well, Google really loves you, Paul and thanks for telling it it's Ava, but you could have put something like sports portrait of Ava in gymnast um, uh, trampoline bounce or gymnast pose, whatever this pose is called. I'm not, a, not an athlete, so I'm, I'm not 100% certain as to what this, uh, this pose would be called. Um, but you've got the opportunity to include those keywords in the alt text phrase so that you can actually tell Google what's going on on this page. When Google sees all of these different sports portraits all are around the subject of sports, then it knows that this page is about sports when people are looking for sports portraits. One of the other things I've just noticed here as well, a little bit further up the page, we've got the email to 
um, part of uh, Paul's website. And here's the code for it hidden behind the scenes. Mail to Paul at uh, Paul D. Smith. One of the things that will be happening, Paul, is this email can be picked up by a spider, a, a robotic piece of software, and you will be getting some spam emails from time to time because this is literally unhidden software in the background. So that's just one of the things that happens across all of your images. So we need a nice SEO friendly file name, a nice SEO friendly alt text, and nice SEO friendly descriptions for these pictures. And that will help you rank. And then we need 600 to 1000 words, ideally, at the bottom of the page here about the subject that you're talking out about. Portraiture was the same. A nice selection of images, some really good reasons to, to come along and get involved and have a have a session with you. Really beautiful selection of pictures. We need some text, some some things that Google can can do. And if you're going to put some text on the page here, it needs to have, as I say, some some H1 headings, some H2 subheadings. It needs to have some text, and you could break this gallery up into two or three galleries down the page with some text in between sessions. You've got to think about what people are going to ask you when they're looking to book a session. The kind of work you're doing is it fashion work is it people's general portraits you know have a think about the things that they're going to ask what they might need to wear some of the the things that kind of handhold them um, and give them a reason to pick up the phone and talk to you but also um, scatter some calls to action through there as well your prices page is uh, is a very clean and simple page. At the moment, we've got three different buttons through the middle here that talk about our athletes, headshots and portraits. To be fair, Paul, I think you could probably add all three of those in a row down the page, pop a picture beside them and make it a very simple menu of pricing. I think at the moment, these parts are probably getting lost or you could add this pricing information onto the gallery page as part of the, the wording that you're putting into place. Again, we need to look, do a little bit of hand holding what's involved in the session. Um, you know, are there some reasons that we can uh, get involved? Give them reasons to pick up the phone and talk to you. So we talked about doing some basic SEO to some of the pages. Um, this page here is your about me page. Here's the hidden reviews. If I've not made it through to to uh, the, th the third kind of page of your website, I've never seen these six reviews. So I'd make sure that these reviews, along with the picture that you've taken of the person, were kind of scattered through the website already so that they're actually giving you some, some love. It's nice to see your story here. Um, the Guild of Photographers, one of the things that SEO wise, we need to actually have some outbound links. So putting some hyperlinks into these words here, like the Guild of Photographers and linking back to the Guild's website, um, is a really great idea. If you've got a profile on their website or on the British Institute's website, then link back through to your profile. Make sure your profile on their site has got lots of pictures, text, information, videos, that kind of thing to make it interesting as well. And that will help reciprocate uh, some Google juice back to your site. So again, this is another page that really should have had your trade association logos. And explaining a little bit about what those trade association logos are and why they're important to you. The contact form page or contact page. There's no contact form to make it really easy for us to get into touch. Um, it's great that you've got a, a map here. I would actually increase the text on this page a little bit. Um, you could add a couple of paragraphs about how to get to Burswick from um, two or three major local towns because actually Google wants some of this local information for SEO purposes. Now I popped your company name into Google and your full address comes up on Google. So I understand why you might not want to include your house address, but it would be quite easy to pop a postcode into here and uh, a little bit for my, for more information, maybe a street name so that uh, Google can pick up on that. Google also loves the fact that you've got a local telephone number and it will actually help your, your Google search engine um, optimization having that local uh, traditional telephone number on there as well so add some information here about uh, how to get in touch I'd probably pop a form on here as to quick and easy way for them to uh, to drop you some contact and just uh, rearrange it so it's, it's aesthetically pleasing as well one of the things that there's not on your website at the moment is a blog 
Now, the blog gives us opportunity to add lots and lots of regular, fresh, new content. Um, if you haven't got a blog, then that's fine. What you can do is actually work on adding content to each of these pages on a regular basis. So every time Google comes back, some point between once a month and once every three months, depending on your site, then it sees that things are growing. Um, I wouldn't go about removing lots of stuff, but I would just tweak things, add an extra paragraph of text here, extra paragraph of text there. And then when you're ready, um, add something like a like a blog onto the, the site. Um, Again, take a look back at your Google Analytics, take a look at how people have been viewing your site and which pages are your most popular and then build up on them from there. So hopefully that's given you a few little things to work on on your site and a few ideas of, of ways to improve it and help you get seen a little bit more. One of the last bits that I did look at were the backlinks to your site. Backlinks are a really important part of SEO. It's part of what we call citations and it's where other websites refer to you. So we spoke a couple of moments ago about the Guild website and the British Institute of Professional Photography's website and the members areas and how you can link those back to your pages. They are both quite high authority domains because they've been around for a long time. But you want to have your business listed in local business directories and places like that as well. One of the other areas that is fantastic for local SEO and making sure you pop up on the map locally is Google My Business. Now, if you've not got started on Google My Business, and I know you haven't really, um, because I've been and had a quick look, take a look in the British Institute of Professional Photography's magazine for the last quarter, and you'll find a, a quick and easy article there with some action steps on how to get involved with Google My Business and how to make it work for your business. Um, it's a quick and easy article, two pages of A4 to have a skim read, and then it's got to 10 top points to, to get sorted. So this is a quick review of paulbsmithphotography.co.uk. I hope you found that beneficial. And I'm Jamie Morgan. I'm the marketing manager for the British Institute of Professional Photography.